Hey folks, Joseph A. Savara here. As we continue with all the Peanuts movies, I'm going to review a very second film called Snoopy Come Home. The 1972 film, which didn't feature Charlie Brown in the title, only Snoopy. This is the first film to feature that title, which later would have other specials including Snoopy the Musical and Snoopy's Reunion. Anyway, it started Chad Reber as Charlie Brown with Todd Barbie as a singing voice, Robin Cohn as Lucy Van Pelt, Stephen Shea as Linus Van Pelt, David Carey as Schroeder, Hilary Momberger as Sally Brown, Chris DeFara as Peppermint Patty, Linda Elkart as Clara, yeah, I know, who looks like Marcy, but it's, but it's just basically an annoying girl. Linda Mendelson as Frida. Johanna Barrier as Lilla. With Shelby Flint as Lilla, her singing voice. And Bill Melendez as Snoopy. And featuring Woodstock, the little yellow birdie. It's produced by Bill Melendez, Lee Mendelson, and Charles M. Schultz. Written by Charles M. Schultz and directed by Bill Melendez. And this is, of course, like the previous DVD, A Boy Named Charlie Brown, which was released in anamorphic widescreen, digitally remastered the way it was shot. Snoopy Come Home was also in anamorphic widescreen digitally remastered the way it looks and it looks even better than ever you know, for both of these films and of course both of them are bare bones as usual but it's better than nothing <laughs> I would say the movie begins set at the beach Snoopy and the rest of the Peanuts gang that hang out and have fun during the summer and Charlie Brown is basically throwing a pebble into the ocean you know, with Linus. Meanwhile, Snoopy is having fun with Peppermint Patty by going surfing and and having a picnic, as well as building sandcastles and everything. Since Snoopy was hanging out with her all this time, Charlie Brown and the rest of the game had went inside the house and they were playing Monopoly. You know, already with, with Charlie Brown landing by going directly to jail. You know. Do not pass or, or do not collect $200. <laughs> well, suddenly Snoopy wants up uh, coming home late. And Charlie Brown had to feed the dog. Which suddenly he cut his thumb after opening the can. You know, he got so furious that he explained to him about what he's been doing. And the fact that you had to be the only person that had to go out more than, than he does. Um, then the next day, Snoopy was preparing to go back to the beach, just so he can go have a picnic with Peppermint Patty once again. Um, but all of a sudden, a new sign has put up, and it turns out it says, No Dogs Allowed. Yeah, that's right, which apparently, this was a new sign that, that started to put up on every single place that Snoopy wants up going to. And yes, this became a, a running gag. Which suddenly you hear a deep voice that's done by Furl Ravenscroft. Yep, which you already know. That's this is the guy who wants up doing the voice of um, Tony the Tiger, where he says they're great, and also the singing voice of of you know what from How the Grinch Stole Christmas. He sang the theme song, saying you're a mean one. Mr. Grinch. Yeah, so that means it'll be like, <laughs> You're a mean one for putting up the sign that says no dogs allowed. They must have been great. <laughs> Sorry, I, I got a little carried away, but I thought it would be funny. Anyway, it, and if that wasn't bad enough, he started to go to the library with Charlie Brown and Sally, and he also 
too had spotted the same sign, you know, saying, No dogs allowed. Yeah. But before that, he, you know, he decided to ask Woodstock to, to type in a letter to the editor to uh, find out about what's going on recently, about putting all these signs that says, No dogs allowed. And, and he wanted to do something about it to get rid of them, so that way, you know, he could be allowed at every place he goes. So yeah. So anyway, after all of this has been going on, you know, Snoopy wants up getting thrown out in every single places, and then he wants up getting into a fight with Linus over the blanket. Yeah, cause he started, um, you know, rolling his nose, and then Snoopy kicks him in the shins, and then after that, uh, he wants up in a boxing match with Lucy. <laughs> Yeah, but then all of a sudden, Snoopy wants to receive a letter from a girl named Lilla, who has been in the hospital for three weeks for unknown reasons, mostly because she might have had an illness, a very rare in illness. And so she wants Snoopy to keep her company all this time. So upon reading the letter, Snoopy has sets off with Woodstock to go on a trip just to find... Lilla at the hospital, you know, only leaving Charlie Brown and the rest of the gang completely in the dark. So as Linus started to do some investigation, they discovered that Lilla is Snoopy's original owner, and and suddenly Charlie Brown wants a fainting upon hearing all of this. Yeah, because as you may already know, this actually did happen in the special. Snoopy's reunion, so yes, Lilla was definitely Snoopy's original owner before Charlie Brown got her, which this is what where it has a deep explanation behind all this. Anyway, Snoopy went on to, to on his quest to meet Lilla, but I had to force to face a lot of challenges, including with the world of signs that keep saying, no dogs allowed. Yeah, everywhere he goes, from on a bus, on a train, and everywhere. Even worse, he wants up spotting an annoying girl by the name of Clara. And yeah, which actually looks a little bit like Marcy, but without glasses. And I gotta say this, I'm glad it's not Marcy, because if it was, she would have never do anything like that to Snoopy and Woodstock as well. So, um, they managed to escape from that girl, but then, of course, she winds up doing a lot of crazy things. And once they wound up escaping, they wound up camping out, you know, and play football, you know, while preparing for dinner. Well, Snippy finally reaches to the hospital, only to soon find out that, yes, once again, the sign, no dogs allowed. To make matters worse, they couldn't even allow birds inside either. So then, um, Snoopy's uh, attempt was trying to get inside the hospital, uh, sneaking inside Lilla's room by disguising himself as one of the doctors. You know, he keeps the company for, for the rest of her stay. But then, Lilla claims that Snoopy's visit will actually help her get better, as it seems. So then, she wants a basking Snoopy. That that he'll soon be able to get out of the hospital and and he was thinking maybe you know he wants Snoopy to visit at the apartment for right now maybe, maybe stay over I mean who knows as a result of this you know they started to do a farewell party for Snoopy so everybody gathered around and and they were already you know setting up some presents you know, everybody was already in tears you know crying about that Snoopy was going to leave everybody else behind and so sh so Snoopy can go meet Lilla well yeah and I gotta say that was one of the saddest moments is when they started crying uh, all the way around even when Schroeder was playing the a farewell tune for Snoopy yeah it, it was really sad and I know Snoopy was crying as well <laughs> shame well 
once um, Snoopy finally went on his quest with Woodstock to uh, Lilla's apartment, he soon found out that since there was, once again, no dogs allowed, <laughs> that same sign that's been bugging him all this time, well, he finally got to meet Lilla, only to soon find out that she had a pet cat. And since, you know, he's aware of that sign that's already put up, that he no longer had to enter the apartment, so he soon had left, left her behind, you know, wish her good luck, and then Snoopy finally went back and with, with Woodstock, and <laughs> and everybody was cheering him on, and and they were so happy and excited that you know he's finally back, and then at the end of the film, he wants up telling uh, Woodstock to type up all the letters about having to return all the stuff you know, back to him because of course he gave all the stuff to them you know so they can borrow it and he wanted to, him to return everything back so yeah everybody started feeling very annoyed by it and then and Charlie Brown got up so upset at Snoopy for what he was doing and then he wants up you know leaving you know, him behind and while well, he just continued writing um, all the letters and stuff, yeah, which, which somehow the movie ends while, you know, the, while the credits finally showed up. <laughs> yeah, such a funny movie and, and such a sweet, um, awesome film. Oh, and just so you know, this was also the last movie that was produced by a company known as Cinema Center Films, which happens to be a theatrical production company unit for CBS Incorporated. But its distributor was from National General Pictures, which happens to be a feeder chain company that's owned by National General Corporation, which at the time, they own all the feeder chains of, of all these uh, movie feeders, including the one in Hollywood, such as you know the Chinese feeder, the National feeder, as well as Westwood Village, and and the Boyne feeder. Yeah, later on, um, a feeder owner by the name of Ted Mann had bought all of the National General feeders, which which would actually were previously owned by Fox West Coast Feeders. It was purchased under his company known as Mann Feeders. Yeah, which Mann Feeders started owning all their feeders, and then they later started building so many multiplexes, including the one here in Glendale. Yeah, they also owned the, the Alex Feeder as well, at the time, <laughs> when it was a movie feeder. Well, but no, but Man Feeders is no longer around anymore because now all their feeders have been bought by other feeder chains, including Regency Feeders. Yeah. And sad to say, half of the feeders that we had in the area, including my area, has already been closed down. Or some of the feeders have been converted into a new feeder, like the Exchange. Yeah. Anyway, it wasn't a box office smash when it first came out. In fact, it didn't do very well. It was a huge bomb when it came out on August 1st, 1972. Which, by the way, the its budget for the film was only $1 million. So, hard to believe. And it made like $245.73. And but it did met pretty well with critics out there. I mean, they gave it a positive review. I mean, in spite of its problems, the movie did became as lovable as as all the other Charlie Brown films and specials that came about. In fact, they even say it was even better than than A Boy Named Charlie Brown. Well, I have to admit, though, I love A Boy Named Charlie Brown even more than this film. But I still enjoy Snoopy Come Home, nevertheless. Um, you know why? Because I'm going to tell you why. I hated the annoying character that they had in the movie by the name of Clara. Clara started out as a freaking annoying bitch who goes around, you know, capturing Snoopy by sort of choking him like that. And they, they tried to escape from, from that bitch. And then suddenly, to make matters worse, because she started singing that song... Fundamental friends, dependability. For some reason, she actually was just dressing up for, for tea, and she actually poured all the tea all the way full on the cup, 
and she claimed that Snoopy did all the mess. So get this for size. She wants up spanking him. When when you already know that this was Clara's stupidity. That pisses me off when, when he did that to Snoopy. You know, Snoopy deserved better than that. And even worse, Snoopy was about to call for help and then suddenly, you know, she she hangs up the phone and she was about to capture him. Yeah, it's what a bitch. Uh, on the other hand, Lilla, you know, which I do feel sorry for her because you know she had an illness and everything. I thought she was cute. I'm only to find out that she was the original owner for Snoopy. But it was really sad because you know, seeing that you know Charlie Brown started feeling very lonely, and so is the rest of the game. You know, that's when we finally get to hear Charlie Brown's uh, deep explanation about how and when that he first got Snoopy, which I know Linus explained to, to Charlie Brown about this. And this is one of the deepest moments that I've ever heard in the film because actually, I pretty much had shared the same experience that Charlie Brown had. Not because I, I had a dog later on. I mean, I did have a dog, all right? Yeah when I was a little kid. Her name was Kathy, you know, and, and that was a cute dog. I had a picture of it too, you know, with Jason and, and Anna. But anyway, Charlie Brown was talking about that before he got Snoopy, his parents had took him to the park and suddenly he explained that one of the kids had thrown a bucket of sand on his head and he started crying. Because that's exactly the same reaction that I had when one of the kids started pouring a, a whole bucket of sand over my head uh, on my long black hair. Yeah, I know it's short now, but I used to have long afro hair that's black. And I remember getting all that sand stuck in my hair and it was hard to get it out. And I, I definitely started crying when this happened. It pisses me off, too, that these kids are doing stupid crap to me like that. But I didn't get a dog until I was only uh, f three or four years old. So I think I already had a dog by the time uh, this happened. So, I know, it, it really sucks. But I think as, as a result to, to what happened, my mom did took me home. And I wound up getting some popsicles. So, yeah. <laughs> So what a treat. <laughs> yeah. I was at Palmer Park when this happened, a long time ago. Yeah, it was at Palmer Park in Glendale, which had all the rides that they had, you know, the swings, and, and, and they even had a, a rocket ship on the side. I, I, I totally remember all of this when I was a kid. And they had all of the jungle gyms and all the other stuff. It was really cool. And the dome, too. Awesome. Oh yeah, brings so much memories. But back to the film, that that was the most important uh, explanation that Charlie Brown had to mention, because um, if you saw the special Snoopy's reunion, you know they did do plenty of their mistakes because they're not a hundred percent accurate. We know that Charlie Brown did not get Snoopy, you know, with Linus around because. Charlie Brown never had met Linus at the time, since he was a little kid back then. And, and I know Sally was not born at the time either, you know, when he got Snoopy. So, so we already know that his parents had bought him Snoopy for Charlie Brown. So I know that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, from the Daisy Hill puppy farm. Anyway, but they had a lot of great scenes. I love the music that they use. Um, this was done by, by the Sherman Brothers. And they did a very good job. Instead of having Vince Guaraldi to, to work on the, the entire theme. So yeah. So it's done by the Sherman Brothers. Uh, Robert and Richard. And the fact that they started using adult voices to sing all the tunes. While they even throw in Furl. Ravencroft doing all these deep voices in the middle of the songs, so it was really cool. Um, I, I love the music that they chose for Snoopy Come Home. I believe this was the first film that they didn't use Vince Guaraldi to, to work on. So that's very interesting. Uh, and the animation was superb. It looks as good as all the other Charlie Brown movies and specials that I've seen. 
Because I noticed the animation started to change a little bit too. And especially the opening sequence where you got to see Snoopy going around, even though it was in full screen, the way they show it. They show a lot of scenes uh, where Snoopy was actually playing the trombone and everything. And, you know, it's going around hanging out with the rest of the gang. And then while hearing the song, Snoopy, 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 come home. Snoopy, come home. Okay, I, I sort of screwed up there. <laughs> That's okay. It was also the first movie that introduced us to Woodstock, the bird. You know, the little yellow bird and all the rest. And, you know, we got to see more Peppermint Patty this time around because this time we got to see her in full form. Yeah, I also remember there was a scene in the movie where where Peppermint Patty was, was hanging out with Charlie Brown by going to the carnival. That's right next door to his house. You started seeing the spotlights. While well, Charlie Brown was just worried about Snoopy, you know, already gone and everything. Yeah, so they were already having fun. You know, they were going on all these rides, and I know they went into the fortune teller machine. Which, I know, Pepper and Patty got her fortune. While Charlie Brown wants up getting his, and it says, forget a kid. Yeah. Just like in the Valentine's special when he's, when the... There was a Candy Hearts that says, forget a kid, yeah. And poor Charlie Brown. But anyway, it's definitely a great sequel to the first movie, A Boy Named Charlie Brown. And I'm happy I got to see it, though. It's I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites out of all the Charlie Brown movies. You know, but I think it's still one of the greatest movies ever made. Period. Yeah. Because later on, as years follow, you know... We wind up having another Charlie Brown movie that's coming right up, and it's going to be called Waste for Your Life, Charlie Brown. Yep, it's coming up. So anyway, I'm going to give Snoopy Come Home a solid four stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.